So now as we move forward and start looking at more specific hormones as a part of an endocrine system, we're going to begin this increase in specificity by looking at a, an example that comes from the world of invertebrates. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Invertebrate Endocrine Control. So we're going to be looking at an endocrine, endocrine control pathway, and that endocrine control pathway will be specifically, um, let's say, in moths. So that's our invertebrate in question. So moths undergo a process known as molting. So let's uh, sort of remember what molting really was. Molting is the idea that the larva, that immature form of the very early moth, is going to grow in stages. So larva grows in stages. And those stages are characterized by different molting events. In essence, what we expect is that this organism, this growing moth, absolutely needs to molt. And because of this need to molt, you're going to basically have to shed the old exoskeleton. So let's write that down. Shed old exoskeleton. And the reason why you're shedding this old exoskeleton is to then secrete a new one on top of that. And why are you doing this? You are constantly growing. You're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Thus, your old exoskeleton is no longer able to cover you. So you need to shed that one and secrete a new one. Now, what we want to ask right now, since we're studying the endocrine system, is how does this possibly happen? What regulates the need to molt? What regulates this shedding of the old exoskeleton and the secretion of a new one? And this is, of course, all regulated. It's all controlled via the very powerful endocrine system, ES for endocrine system. Now, what we're going to be doing in this flowchart is not only looking at this process of molting, but from a broader perspective, looking at the pathway necessary for an endocrine molting process to occur. So the next part of the flowchart, we'll entitle it endocrine pathway. So let's look at the actual pathway that this moth will undergo utilizing the endocrine system that it possesses. So the endocrine pathway, let's say, of molting, and that's going to be uh, shown on figure 45.12. So let's go through the pathway and see what specific hormones and what specific detections and responses that we get within this pathway. So we're going to start off um, in a very important part of the moth, and that is the brain. So the moth has this brain, and within the brain, I'm going to tell you, are neurosecretory cells. So let's write this down. Neurosecretory cells. And you should already be thinking, what do these guys do? Neurosecretory cells secrete neurohormones, right? But now I'm telling you we're going to get more specific, so I'm going to give you a specific hormone to remember. Neurosecretory cells, they're going to be secreting a hormone called PTTH. This stands for pro-thoracicotropic hormone, but we're just going to be calling it PTTH from this point forward. So once you have this hormone secreted, it's going to have a message with it, right? It's a chemical signaling molecule. What is the message? The message of PTTH is as follows. PTTH is a hormone, a neurohormone specifically, that signals the pro-thoracic gland. So this is an anatomical part of the moth, okay, within its sort of nervous system area that's called the prothoracic gland, that's the name, prothoracicotropic hormone. It signals the prothoracic gland, that's what we should remember here, to produce something. This is going to produce, remember this is a pathway, so we're going to have constant production secretion, and the production is going to be of ecdysteroid. So ecdi, remember that was the root for molting and shedding. It's going to be a specific thing called ecdysteroid. Why are we making ecdysteroid or producing it? Well, that's because we got a signal from the prothoracic gland to do this. And how did the prothoracic gland know to do this? Well, that's because the brain sent the PTTH neurohormone to it to tell it to do the following steps. Okay, so now we have this set. What does ecdysteroid tell us then? What is its job in this endocrine pathway? Its job, first of all, is a to be produced. But what I want to mention about its production, first of all, is that its production is not continuous. 
So sometimes you're going to have hormones continuously produced over and over and over again to maintain, let's say, a steady state. But this hormone is not produced continuously. It's actually produced in bursts. Is that, that's what we'll call it. So we'll say that ecdysosteroid is produced in bursts. And this is going to really affect the way that it works. Because what we imagine is that a burst is going to be a specific trigger. When you have a burst of ecdysosteroid, this will be a direct trigger for a very important process in the moth life cycle. That process is to molt. So the burst is going to be a trigger to molt. So this is sort of answering our question so far. How do we know when to molt? Well, you need a burst of ecdysosteroid. How do you get a burst of ecdysosteroid? Make sure that the prothoracic gland is secreting ecdysosteroid. So now we have this trigger based off of the burst in ecdysosteroid production. In addition, what we need to understand is the molting process is controlled by ecdysosteroid because ecdysteroid controls a process that we've talked about before, and that process is metamorphosis. Ecdysosteroid controls metamorphosis. Remember, we're talking about insects. The larva has to turn into an adult, and there are going to be stages that we have to follow. Metamorphosis will govern some of those stage passages. And if we remember, metamorphosis simply means we're going to have a change in morph, change in form, change in shape, in physical structure of this growing larva. And as you continue to change in form, as you continue to metamorph, you will become closer to the adult form. So we'll just write closer to adult. All of this is governed by ecdysteroid, and ecdysteroid can only work if it gets the correct signal from the prothoracic gland, and the prothoracic gland can only signal if it has the message from the brain called PTTH. Notice how we're making a pathway of endocrine signaling here in the brain. Okay, so that's sort of our first step of this endocrine pathway, or first half of the endocrine pathway. This needs to happen. In addition, there needs to be an, another hormone that's involved in this pathway, and that hormone is JH. JH, which is separate from this area over here, but still interacts with it, as we'll see, JH stands for juvenile hormone. And specifically, juvenile hormone, which is a part, another hormone, part of this endocrine pathway within moths to initiate molting and growing, juvenile hormone is secreted by a pair of endocrine glands, and it's specifically going to be secreted by what we would call corporora, I want to make sure I spell this right, C-O-R-P-O-R-A, corporora alata. So, this is a specific pair of endocrine glands. Two endocrine glands, remember, glands secrete things, right? So what are the two endocrine glands called corpora alata secrete? These guys are going to be secreting juvenile hormone, JH. So what does JH do? JH, interestingly enough, technically, if you think about it after this, it actually prevents metamorphosis. So it actually works a bit antagonistically against this PTTH prothoracic ecdysosteroid release in the brain over here. So over here we have a separate gland called the corpora alata that's preventing metamorphosis by secreting JH and also its secretion is also not continuous. So it's also secreted in bursts. So we're going to have some sort of battle that's going to be happening between these two hormones of question. So, what is the mechanism of action? How does JH do its job? It goes like this. What we're going to initially have in any growing larva, let's say a very small larva that's going to turn into a moth, it will always begin with incredibly high levels of juvenile hormone, of JH. Those high levels of JH are going to interact with ecdysteroid. They're going to tell ecdysosteroid, so it, ecdysteroid will also detect the high levels of JH, and it will cause, let's say, it will say in response to the high levels of JH, it will say, I want to increase size and try to begin molting. I want to do that. Now, I know JH is sort of trying to stop me, but I'm trying to stop it. So I'm going to try to fight it head on by trying to increase size and molting, aka start this metamorphosis process. So this is sort of an antagonistic relationship that's happening here. Now, once this is happening, we're going to have a battle, and the battle will be between ecdysteroid and JH. 
So who's going to win? What we're going to notice is that as the larva grows, so as it continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it has to molt. So it's going to molt. That's just a process that has to happen because of this relationship here. The larva grows, it molts, but it's still a juvenile. Okay, but it's still a juvenile up until a certain point though. It's still a juvenile. So it's still very young and it's not an adult. Why is it still a juvenile? Because it hasn't undergone a specific form of growth called metamorphosis. Still haven't done metamorphosis, so ecdysteroid is kind of losing here right now. So what's going to happen? Eventually, what we notice is that after each molt, every time this growing moth, this growing larva molts, there's going to be a direct effect on the levels of JH. This causes JH levels to decrease. Every time you have a molt, JH levels naturally get lower and lower and lower, up until you get to the point at which you're going to have a very low level of JH, of juvenile hormone. When you have this, let's say, low level of JH, I will say that there's going to be a certain point where we would consider it low. What did we start as? High, right? Now I'm telling you that we have reached so many molts that we have what we would call a low JH level. This would mean that the larva now finally has the chance to do the following. The larva will undergo a metamorphosis process. It will molt. The larva will molt and it will eventually turn into a new form called the pupa. What is this new form? How did that happen? That's through a change in form, through metamorphosis, okay? Now, why is metamorphosis happening here? Because the levels of JH are so low, it cannot prevent metamorphosis anymore. So once you're at this pupa stage of the growing life cycle, you're actually going to continue to grow, you're continuing to molt, whatever. You're going to then, I will tell you, reach the lowest stage of JH possible in your development. That would mean that you are a pupa, a very grown pupa that will finally turn into an adult. And that final message to turn into an adult will be through one final molting process and that adult uh, sort of uh, maturation will be via metamorphosis. So you will finally turn into a full adult because you have such low, 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 low levels of JH because you've molted over and over and over and over again because after each molt, your JH levels decrease, you finally get to become an adult. Notice how we have these bursts of this ecdysteroid that's going to cause these bursts of molts and thus we're going to have this overall antagonistic relationship that eventually results in a grown and fully developed moth. Finally, last thing about invertebrate endocrine control, we can actually put this into some sort of uh, relevancy. There's actually something known as synthetic JH. We can make juvenile hormone and it actually is an insecticide. So what we notice is that if you, if you let, let's say, the nature do its job and nature says, you know, after a certain point, the levels of JH will get so low that the insect will turn into an adult. And when you've turned into an adult, you can sexually reproduce and make more insects. What do we want to do if we are a human? We want to get rid of them. Insecticide is to get rid of those growing and reproducing uh, insects. So what does synthetic JH do? This is going to be... Uh, constantly going to prevent the development of reproducing adults. Why is that? Why is it preventing the development of reproducing adults? Well, that's because you are not letting the natural order of JH getting lower every time after each molt because you're constantly pouring JH all over, let's say, these insects or pouring them wherever the situation may be. So this is going to cause these adults to never get to the age of reproduction. And because you never get to the age of reproduction, because you're constantly bombarded with JH, you will then have a significant decrease in the overall insect population because insects are not turning into adults, they're not reproducing, and thus you have a lower amount of insect population. That covers our look at invertebrate endocrine control. Now we're going to shift gears and look at endocrine control and hormones within us.